For the following exercises, which of the tables could represent a linear function? For each that could be linear, find a linear equation that models the data. All right, so here we have a table and we have to identify whether it could represent a linear function or not. So what we have to remember, and I got it listed over here, is that li linear functions have a constant slope, okay? So basically what that means is that for every change in y uh, and change in x, that if you were to, let's say, take those changes for a few pairs, it must be the same, all right? So in order to approach this, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to define the changes, all right, in x for each three pairs here, basically. I'm gonna call this one pair. This will be then my next pair. And then this will be my uh, third pair, okay? So what's the, what's the change in x value here between zero and five? Well, obviously it's five, right? How about between five and 10? Obviously that's, that's five. And then 10 and 15, obviously that is five again. So how about now we do the same thing for y, okay? Now you might say, well, where's y? Well, remember g of x, right? That, just scribble that out, call it y, okay? Same thing. So from five, to negative 10, what's the difference between those two? Well, it simply would be negative 15, right? We can call it negative 15, right? We went from five all the way to negative 10, so it'd be negative 15. If you wanted to uh, work this out, right, or if you needed a formula, what you would do is you basically say, we would take the second y value and subtract the first y value from it, y1. So the second one here I'm calling 10, so that'd be negative 10 minus then my y1 value of five, and what's 10 minus five? That's negative 15. That's how I arrived at it, all right? Okay, so let's do it for the next uh, set. So we go from negative 10 to negative 25, that sounds like it's negative 15 again. And then as well, we go from negative 25 to negative 40, so that sounds like negative 15 again. Now what we do is it's not just enough to know that, hey, these are all constant and these are constant. What we have to do is we have to divide the change in y by the change in x for each of them, and then determine whether those divisions are constant, those ratios, those slopes. So let's do that. So let's do for the first one, it was negative 15 all divided, whoops, all divided by five. And obviously that works out to be negative three. Okay, what would we do for the red one? Well, same thing. We would take the negative 15 and divide it by the five. And what does that work out to be? negative three, that's the same, and I think you get the picture, right? So since all of these now changes in y relative to the change in x, aka the slope, these are the slope, this is the slope. Since the slopes are now equal and constant, we now know that this thing represents a linear line, okay? So it is linear. Now, of course, right, the problem can't just stop there. What we now have to do is we have to find an equation. So we now note that we did actually find the slope, right? We just mentioned that the slope here, remember slope is always y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Another way you could have written this is the change in y over the change in x. And that's just what we calculated here for each. We realized that the slope was a negative three, okay? And what you could do now if you wanted, pick any two points like here, here's one point, here's another point, and you can plug it on into this equation if you like, right? Just double check. But it will work out to be negative three. So now what I need to do is I need to now find um, the linear equation, right? That models this. So remember, when we're trying to find the linear equation that models it, what they're really asking us for is to find y is equal to mx plus b and to know the slope and the y-intercept. Now what we do know here is we do know the slope, but we do not know the y-intercept. How do we figure it out? What do you think? Now the key lies in actually this equation itself. Now remember, y is equal to mx plus b. Anytime you have an equation, if you know all of the values except for one, you can always solve for that missing value using algebra. So we're looking for b. That means I better know the other three, the y, the m, and the x, right? So all that y and x represent in a formula, in the linear equation formula, is simply a point. That's it. Now what you can do is you can literally take any one of these points, this, 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 or this, and simply plug in the x and the corresponding y value, aka 
g of x, right? Same thing. You can plug in their corresponding values into this equation. And look, you would then know a y, you would know an x, and you would be able to figure out b because you know the slope. So you do know m. All right? So pick any point you like there. Okay, so why don't we plug in this particular point? So here we'll plug in x is 0 and y is 5. So plug in 5 here. The uh, slope is negative 3. The x value is 0, and we're trying to find b. So notice this term just cancels, and we're left with now 5 is equal to b. So now we know what b is, the y-intercept, and we know what the slope is. So all we got to do is now just throw it into the equation. So y is equal to negative 3 x plus 5. There you go. So let's take a look at the next one. All right? Ready? Try it on your own now, and I'll run through it. Pause the video if you like. All right? So let's find all the changes. So the change here is going to be 5. Right? The change, the next one is going to be 5. And the next one is also going to be 5. Okay? Let's do it now for the y's, a.k.a. the h of x's. Right? So this looks like it's going to be 25. 25, right? Now this one, this might look a little strange, right? But this one's going to be now 75. Okay. And now, what is this one? This one looks like it's going to be 125, right? So, what are your thoughts about this one? Now remember, we have to take y and divide it by x. So we have to take our, and I should have put these, I guess, in red and, and, and blue, but you guys get the picture. So now, what do I need to do? I need to take my change in y and divide it by the change in x, meaning I need to take y and divide it by x, and I'll take the y value here of 25 over 5. And what does that work out to be? Well, that works out to be simply 5, right? Okay, let's check the next one. The next one would be 75 over 5, right? And if I do, uh, if I do that particular math, what do we get? We're going to get 15, right? Now here's the problem. This is essentially the slope, right? The slope between the first two points was 5, and now the slope between the second two is 15? Linear functions have a constant slope. This doesn't look like constant to me. Okay, They have to be the same. So that being the case, I can definitively conclude that this is not a linear function. So maybe not not, not not. Hmm. Maybe just no. All right. So now let's do the last one. All right, let's find those changes. So this is 5, this looks like 5, and this also looks like 5. How about now this change? Well, that's actually going to be a positive 25, right? Positive 25. All right, this is also then going to be a positive 25, and this looks like it's also going to be a positive 25. Okay, now if you notice, these are all the same, right? If I were to do the division, you don't even need to necessarily do it, but... Uh, for this problem, you do because we need to find the linear equation. But if you just wanted to conclude whether this was linear or not, we can de determine right now. All of these divisions will be the same. All right. But however, just finishing this out to find the formula, it's going to be change in y divided by the change in x. I know then it's going to be the y change that I found, 25 divided by 5. And obviously, this is going to work out to be a slope of 5. Now that I know the slope is 5, all right, and I'll just erase all this now. I need to find the equation. Remember, that means that we have to find the y-intercept. So y is equal to mx plus b. Now, we have to find uh, any, we can choose any point we like here. Why don't we choose the first one, okay? The first one's nice because actually it just cancels the slope, right? It's, that's kind of, that's the little trick. So actually, this is the answer already. So now what we realize now is we can plug in y, excuse me, we can plug in negative 5 for y, because remember, f of x, we just call that y, even though that looked like an x. I swear it was a y. This is going to be negative 5 is equal to the slope value of 5, then multiplied by the x value of that point, which is 0 plus b. And notice, b is equal to negative 5. Now just put it all together. So your formula will be y is equal to 5x minus 5. Voila. Guys, thank you for tuning in. Appreciate it very much. If you found this video helpful, please recommend us to your friends. Tell them to check out the videos. It's free. Right? What could be better? Take care.